Hey Candle Clubbers, welcome back. I'm Jasmine, your host here on the Soy Society Wellness Channel. I don't know, I guess I just wanted to have a moment where I was anchoring. Um, but yeah, so anyways, for today, <laughs> we're talking about how I got my brand into Whole Foods Market as a supplier. Yep, Whole Foods. <laughs> often how did I get my candles into Whole Foods and honestly I'm not sure how they found out about me I know here around the city in Austin I do go to quite a few like farmers markets pop-up markets um, any outdoor market where people can find my brand because I am small so I need people to you know to see that we are here we're local we're available so my thought is their their store buyer may have went to one of those events my other idea is that maybe someone gifted them a candle. Um, I've done a few like bulk orders for like some different boxes that companies are doing in the city. So maybe that was it. Maybe they were on just Instagram looking for Austin candle brands. Honestly, I don't know. However, I did receive an email and they asked for me to send some candles, sample candles, and to set up a meeting. So, since I'm in Whole Foods, we can guess that the meeting went well. <laughs> so, um, my experience there has been great. I don't really have anything bad to say. I will say that there were quite a few learning curves. There are way more pros than cons as a wholesale supplier just in general. So, I'll kind of talk about a little bit of that. What things I had to get for my brand so I could be in Whole Foods. I did end up getting barcodes for my candles so then that way when people are checking them out they can scan them. That is something I didn't have prior to just because when I go to markets or people shop online they select the item there in person or put it in their cart so there hadn't been a need for barcodes so I did get those. I did rebrand and I instead of just having like a front label with the candle name on it like serene awake brave I did go ahead and do a label on the back which included the warning label but also what scents and essential oils are in the candle and the burn time any questions that somebody might have about the product I did try and put them on the back label because I'm not there in person to talk about the brand so I wanted to make sure that everything that they needed were <clears throat> was on the label I think for the most part those were the biggest things that I did. I think I did maybe up the amount of coverage I had for my car insurance since I deliver the candles to Whole Foods. You have to have a certain amount of liability coverage and so on and so forth. But if you know you're going to be shipping your product to someone where you do wholesale for then you may not need the additional coverage learning curves that I went through. So the learning curves that I first began experiencing with Whole Foods happened right at the time where COVID happened and we did the lock-ins. So I think I did my first shipment of candles in April, but originally I was going to do a shipment in March, but they actually pulled their offer back and were like, well, the store that we wanted to put you in since it's brand new, we're not gonna focus on that type of product at the moment so they have put me kind of on the shelf for a little bit so I know how it feels when recording artists are like they shelved me you know but um, I want to say like a week later they emailed me and they decided to put me in the flagship Whole Foods store so the very original one that's downtown so it ended up being like a blessing they doubled the order. The other learning curve that I experienced with Whole Foods as a supplier was meeting the demand. With COVID a lot of people started shopping online so I had a huge influx of people going online to shop from the website and a huge amount of people who were ordered buying candles at Whole Foods so I just didn't have enough candles and what would happen is the Whole Foods would put in an order like on a Sunday or Monday and then because I was having to make the candles to meet the demand I wasn't getting it over until like Friday there and that's not great because 
they don't have back stock so when they're out of your product and they're ordering it they're saying like this candle is out completely there's nothing on the shelf um what i do now is i put aside specific candles a specific amount of candles for whole foods and then any other orders that i get they come from my regular inventory and plus it just makes me look like a better supplier when i'm able to bring products the next day or the day after that because it's like oh, okay bet so then now if they need something they can just put in an order it doesn't really matter what day it is because they know that they can trust that I will be able to deliver so you want to be credible so that was something I had to work on yes and then the other big learning curve that I had to navigate was when I put my candles in the store originally, I just gave them my most popular ones, and this was around April. But then in August, I'm like, okay, well, I know holiday is coming up, so I'm going to do my holiday scents. But I had just missed the, the switch that the stores do for like spring, summer, fall, winter. I need to be thinking forward, like what scents I want to do for spring, summer. Then making sure I send them the sample candles in December, which I was able to do, and then make sure I have barcodes and everything else uploaded into the system so they can see that they're ready to go for January for whenever they're doing their switch on their end. So yeah, we have things that we have to learn that we didn't know. So I think those were the biggest things that you know I learned working with a supplier. Stay tuned, we're coming in for a part two.